Hello everyone, this is Sarita Umesh. Welcome to my channel Fun Chemistry. Today we are going to learn about polymers. The A to Z points, whatever you required for your board exam, I am discussing in this video. But video is not completed. It is actually the first part of polymers. In this I am discussing classification of polymers and later about the addition polymers and condensation polymers. Also about the biopolymers and the rubber, different types of rubber, natural rubbers and artificial rubbers. We will be discussing that soon. Before starting, I have a request. Kindly subscribe my channel. If you like the video, don't hesitate to like it, share and comment. Before we begin, I have a question. What are polymers? Polymers are macromolecules. Polymers are macromolecules what is the meaning of macromolecules macro the word macro means big so polymers are macromolecules meaning very large molecules with high molecular mass in the order of 10 raised to 3 to 10 raised to 7 u u means unified mass now how this word polymer generated polymer formed Actually, the word polymer is derived from Greek, from two Greek words. One is poly, the other one is mer. Poly means many and mer means unit. So the meaning of polymer is many units. In class 8, you have acquired a small quantum of knowledge about polymers. There you studied to form a polymer, you need a monomer what are monomers monomers are the simplest repeating unit of a polymer polymer is a collection of monomers it's a collection of monomers generally joined together by chemical bonds so the process of formation of polymers from their respective monomers is called polymerization but polymerization means simply if you take two uh, monomers and just combine it won't form a polymer you have to apply specific conditions what are these conditions like specific temperature pressure catalyst all these you have to apply then only the polymerization will take place move on to the classification of polymers there are different types of classification what I'm discussing now is based on the source, meaning from where we are getting the polymers. Based on the source, we have three polymers, natural polymers, semi-synthetic polymers and synthetic polymers. What are natural polymers? Natural polymers are polymers obtained from natural sources. For example, protein, you know that protein is present in our body. Proteins are polymers. The monomers of proteins are amino acids, meaning amino acids combine to form proteins. Starch, cellulose, these two are polymers and their basic unit, that means monomers are glucose molecules. Natural rubber, we call it as polyisoprene that's a chemical name of natural rubber polyisoprene so polyisoprene many isoprene so what may be the monomer of natural rubber isoprene now next one is semi synthetic polymers what is the meaning of semi synthetic meaning the raw materials to make the polymer we are taking from the nature and after some chemical treatment, we are getting these type of semi-synthetic polymers. For example, rayon. You know that rayon is called artificial silk, right? You have studied this in class 8. Then, cellulose nitrate. Then, synthetic polymers. What is the meaning of synthetic polymers? Synthetic polymers means they are purely chemical in origin. Purely chemical in origin. Examples, nylon, polythene, buna S, buna N and PVC. 
this buna n and buna s are artificial rubbers they are artificial rubbers another important point rayon as we studied it's a semi synthetic polymer and chemically rayon is cellulose acetate this is cellulose nitrate that is another semi synthetic polymer but rayon is chemically cellulose acetate then next one is based on structure based on the structure of the polymer we have three different types linear polymers branched chain polymers and cross linked or network polymers what is the meaning of linear polymers the polymers in which monomers are joined together and form long chains such type of polymers are called linear polymers for example high density polyethylene polyvinyl chloride etc branched chain polymers means there are certain linear chains or straight chains but from the straight chain you can see small branches are hanging such type of polymers are called branched chain polymers example polyethylene and polystyrene here i have mentioned an important point that is low density polyethylene what are low density polyethylenes low density polyethylenes are branched chain polymers when branches increases the density decreases so linear polymer example is high density polyethylene and branched chain it is low density so don't simply write polyethylene you should mention whether it is high density or low density then cross linked or network polymers between the linear chains there will be many many cross links such type of polymers are called cross linked or network polymers example bakelite and melamine in detail we'll study so linear polymer what are linear polymers linear polymers are polymers in which monomeric units are linked together to form long straight chains one example is nylon that we already discussed the word is derived from the name of two important cities new york and london so new york ny that is nylon's ny then london l o n because the researchers were going on these two places simultaneously and they discovered it simultaneously that is why the name nylon now nylon is a linear polymer see this is the structural representation of linear polymers you can see so many straight chains in this next is branched chain polymer this is one linear chain or a straight chain on that there are branches the branches are all these are different branches so polymers containing linear chains with some branches are called branched chain polymers then next we move on to the third type that is cross linked polymers what are cross linked polymers you see here this is a linear chain a straight chain this is another linear chain but in between you can see a cross links cross links are present cross links are not just simple attractions they are normal chemical bonds they are covalent bonds so the cross links are covalent bonds then through this cross linking these type of polymers are getting a three dimensional network structure so that's why we are calling cross linked polymers as network polymers now the, what are the properties of this cross linked polymers they are hard brittle and rigid these all due to this cross links and its three dimensional structure one important thing you have to remember here the monomers of cross linked polymers are generally bifunctional or trifunctional meaning you take the monomer in that minimum two functional group present in such monomers that's why they were able to form cross links now based on mode of polymerization we have two types one is addition polymer the other one is condensation polymer what is the difference between these two 
whenever the questions like distinguish between or write the difference between comes you have to present your answers in a tabular form so you can see i have written it here in the tabular form so what are addition polymers addition polymers are formed through addition polymerization addition polymerization is also known as chain growth polymerization hence addition polymers are also known as chain growth polymers next is condensation polymers are formed by condensation polymerization and condensation polymerization is also known as step growth polymerization hence condensation polymers are also known as step growth polymers now move on to the next difference the monomers of addition polymers are generally unsaturated molecules you know the meaning of unsaturated molecule what is the meaning of unsaturated molecules they are either double bonded or triple bonded compounds or both can be present alkenes you know double bonded compounds alka dienes me dienes dienes means two double bonds are present so an alkene with two double bonds are called alka dienes then alkynes all these are unsaturated molecules so monomers of addition polymers are generally unsaturated molecules but in the case of condensation polymers the monomers contains two to three functional groups this we already discussed that the monomers are bifunctional or trifunctional then next one about the molecular mass addition polymerization from the word itself you can understand just addition is taking place monomer units are just added nothing is eliminated from that just added so you take the total mass of the monomers that will be the mass of the polymer so molar mass of the or molecular mass of the polymer will be a whole number multiple of mass of monomers or you just add all the monomers masses you will get the mass of the polymer but in the case of condensation polymerization or condensation polymers during this condensation polymerization small molecules like water alcohol hcl nh3 etc are eliminated so definitely the mass will be a bit lesser than the total mass of the monomers because small molecules are eliminated so molecular mass of polymers is not a whole number multiple of mass of monomers these are the four important difference between addition polymers and condensation polymers now examples many examples are there a few examples i have mentioned here you can check that polythene polypropene buna s buna n pvc all these are addition polymers nylon 66 dacron or terylene dacron another name is terylene it's a kind of polyester glyptal then phbv is written here phbv is a biodegradable polymer you know that all these polymers plastics many of them are non biodegradable and it's a threat to the environment so now scientists are working on the biodegradable polymers one of the biodegradable polymers is phbv in detail we'll study later then nylon 2 nylon 6 nylon 2 nylon 6 that also a biodegradable polymer then there are certain important points that you should know the addition polymers are formed by the repeated addition of monomer molecules possessing double bond or triple bond that point we already discussed that is monomers are generally unsaturated compounds and condensation polymers condensation polymers the monomer units are normally bifunctional or trifunctional the reaction in which small molecules like h2o alcohol hcl nh3 etc are eliminated then such reactions are called condensation reaction or such type of polymerizations are called condensation polymerization then in addition polymerization all the monomer units are repeatedly added and no elimination of molecules take place there is no elimination everything is continuously added that's why i told you a point 
molar mass of the polymer will be a whole number multiple of mass of monomers this particular point you can expect as a assertion reason type question or you can expect as give reasons so this is very very important before we move on to the next classification i just want to discuss with you two different types of polymers that is homopolymers and copolymers what are homopolymers homopolymers are polymers formed from a single kind of monomers that means you take the polymer you can see that only a single type of unit is repeating copolymers copolymers are polymers formed from different kind kinds of monomers polymers are formed from either same kind of monomers or of different kind of monomers now you can see the examples here for homopolymer polythene polythene is formed from ethene polypropene polypropene is from propene pvc polyvinyl chloride it's from vinyl chloride then polyacrylonitrile it's from acrylonitrile teflon you know that non stick cookwares the coating the black color coating that is of teflon and that is from tetrafluoroethane so you can see that a single monomer units are present in homopolymers but in copolymers for example nylon 6x it has two monomers one is hexamethylene diamine the other one is adipic acid like that another one dacron or terylene dacron or terylene is a kind of polyester ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid are the monomers then bakelite bakelite phenol and formaldehyde are the monomers then melamine all these are examples of copolymers now move on to the fourth classification what is that classification based on molecular forces we have four different types of polymers elastomers fibers thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics elastomers and fibers i'm going to explain now and thermoplastics and thermosetting plastic the comparative study we will do so your learning process will be more easy what are elastomers elastomers are elastic polymers elastomers are elastic polymers these polymeric chains are actually held together by the weakest van der waal forces of attraction this allow them to stretch you know that elastic substance can stretch natural rubber vulcanized rubber buna s buna n neoprene all these are elastomers examples for elastomers natural rubber you know that it is obtained from the nature from the rubber tree but you can see here vulcanized rubber what is the meaning of vulcanized rubber the natural rubber is heated with sulfur to improve certain properties that process is called vulcanization or that rubber is called vulcanized rubber now buna s buna n and neoprene are examples of artificial rubbers now move on to fibers what are fibers fibers are again polymers held together by strong intermolecular force of attraction intermolecular force of attractions are called van der waals forces of attraction and in this particular case it is hydrogen bonding as you all know the strongest van der waals force fibers are thread like solids they have very high tensile strength and modulus you know weight carrying capacity is more if you apply a load or you suspend a load at the tip of this thread like structure it won't stretch very easily it can withstand or it can resist that stretchability now they are normally crystalline in nature because of the close packing of chains due to strong intermolecular hydrogen bonding this point you have to keep in your mind fibers have crystalline nature why because of the close packing of chains 
how this close packing is happening through strong intermolecular hydrogen bonds nylon 6x dacronoterylene acronoterylene is a type of polyester there are different types of polyesters but one among them is dacron now about thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics you can see here the differences thermoplastics are formed by addition polymerization it is formed by the addition polymerization but thermosetting by condensation polymerization in thermoplastics the lots of linear long chains are present they are slightly branched but if you come to the thermosetting plastic they have a three dimensional network structure due to large number of branches or cross links all the polymer chains are held together by weak van der waals forces of attraction that is in thermoplastic thermosetting plastics are cross linked polymers so the polymer chains are linked by strong covalent bond so cross links are actually not just van der waals forces they are strong covalent bonds thermoplastics on heating they soften and harden on cooling but thermosetting plastics they do not soften on heating because of this property thermoplastics can be remolded or reshaped or we can reuse it but thermosetting plastics once you heat it everything set you can't reuse it or you can't remold it thermoplastics are normally soft weak and less brittle but thermosetting plastics are hard strong and more brittle you know why they are more brittle because they have very hard structure due to the cross links this point we already discussed thermoplastics can be remolded reshaped or we can reuse it but thermosetting plastics you cannot remold for example polyethylene polystyrene pvc all these are thermoplastics but bakelite melamine urea formaldehydrazine all these are thermo setting plastics now very important point this point you have to note down it can be asked in your examination in the case of thermo setting plastics on heating what will happen extensive cross linking this is very 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 important extensive cross linking takes place in molds so it become infusible so you cannot reuse it hope this much is clear so stay tuned i'll be uploading the next video soon that is polymers part 2 don't forget to subscribe thank you